Hey everyone, welcome to Off Topic Games. Today I like to do a deck profile on a post Future Fighters Collection 2015 Brawler deck. And um, I just did a great nature deck profile and I rambled on for hours, so I'm gonna keep this one short. <laughs> Uh, there's really not much to talk about in Brawlers, so I'll just show you the cards. So first I run four copies of the Big Bang Knuckle Buster. Um, he's the go-to ride for grade 3 of this deck. And then, the, um, as you might expect, the other grade 3 I run is the other Big Bang, so it's called Big Bang Knuckle Dragon. Um, of course, if you have a choice to ride one of these two, I would suggest that you always go into this one. Use a skill to put this one into soul, so you can get cr uh, cross ride status. Um, many of you probably don't even know what this Junker guy does, but you can counter blast two brawlers to give it a. I think you can attack the front row and it gets plus five. I don't know if it matters too much, but he can also he also has an auto ability where he can soul blast one card to plus three until end of battle. You know, like if you don't, if your opponent kills a booster or something, you ride this, and they're 9k, you could hit 14, which <laughs> I've done in the past, but I don't know if it's that useful. So that's the grade threes. Very, very standard. As for the grade twos, I run four of the Big Bang slash Buster. Yeah. So he's the mate for this guy, the Big Bang Knuckle Buster. He's an 11k. Uh, he's an 11k attacker. If you have a Big Bang Knuckle Vanguard, so either of these guys will activate his plus two scale. So he's an 11k attacker, and whenever your Big Bang Knuckle hits, uh, it gets plus three. <clears throat> and of course, uh, many of you probably even know probably know what brawlers do, but uh, this effect, of course, can stack. And then I run three copies of the Big Bang Slash Dragon. Uh, you can run four if you want, it doesn't really matter. The only reason why I cut it to three, I might even cut it to two, is because I don't ride into this guy. But the reason why you want to keep him is because his skill is good. His skill is um, exactly the same as a second text for this guy. Actually, no, it's not. I lied. So this one, it gets plus 3 whenever your brawler hits. So this could matter, um, turn 2 for example. Uh, you ride this, you call this. If this hits, if this vanguard hits, then this will become a 12k attacker for the turn. So um, other than that, once you're a grade 3, uh, it's the same as the second text for this guy. So I run 3 of that. I run 3 copies of... <coughs> Chaturo? I don't know how to pronounce his name, but this guy right here, he's a common from GBTO2, and I think it's a very good card. Um, as a rear guard, he's always an 11k attacker. Uh, he cannot attack a rear guard, and if he attack, if he hits a vanguard, he can counterblast one to draw a card and to bind one card in their uh, in your opponent's grave. So uh, early pressure, I mean, a free, not a free draw, but counter blast one to draw a card is never that bad. It's pretty good, in fact. It's an 11k attacker, and the binding the grave thing might actually be good, you know, if your opponent's playing Legion, or even if they're not playing Legion, since the new perfect guards require copies in the grave, you know, you can really screw them over with this card. Uh, but yeah, it's really important that it's an 11k attacker. And last, I run one copy of Skyhawk Dragon. Uh, this is kind of just for fun. I never see, I've never encountered a situation where this card is actually that good. I might, you know, run four copies of this instead, or m bump this up to four. Whatever you want. Uh, people argue that this is a good card, and it could be, but I don't really care for it. <laughs> so that's a great tooth. Um, yeah, not much substitutions you can make so far with grade twos and grade threes. You can put in a dead size if you want, but I, don't, I really don't see a reason to. <clears throat> For grade ones, I run four stride fodder, very standard. Um, <clears throat> four perfect guards, so um, very questionable. I just don't have more of this. I don't want to buy it, and 
Unflipping Counter Blast is not important at all in this game, I think. I, I think you always end games with leftover Counter Blast, so you don't have to worry about it. You can run whatever you want, honestly. Do whatever you want. But you want four perfect cards. <clears throat> then, uh, I have two Rising Phoenix. Um, not much to explain here. Three is okay, but it's, this is not a deck where you keep re-riding and re-legioning, so... Um, I think two is good enough. Just put it behind the Vanguard or whatever, or you can even put it behind. It's nice because most of the great twos are 11k attackers too, so um, you can put it pretty much anywhere. But yeah, two copy sounds... it works for me, so I leave it at that. And then, um, for the last four slots, I run one arc and one... I don't know what this is called. Wyvern Strike, whatever, whatever. So, uh, one and three. Um, you can do whatever you want with this slot, I think. I think it's very arguable. Whatever works. The only reason why I don't run much arcs is because his effect only does something, I guess, once a game. And if that's a turn you legion. Like I said, you don't really re-legion and reuse um, Knuckle Buster's skill over and over again uh, because of the new stride. Uh, support that came out so most most of the time you know his skill he's never on the field when I use a skill even if I run like three or four so I kind of cut it down to one honestly I don't even know why I have one the other guy is an 11k attacker that cannot attack rear guard uh, it's a GB1 skill the reason why I run this card, more of this card over this arc, is because I like, um, uh, it's a conquest target. It can become 21 or I guess 16 if you only kill if they have a front row, but yeah, it's just nice to have. Sometimes you just kind of poop out on attackers when you're playing things like DX, which, yeah, I don't like that matchup very much, but your rear guards die very often, your grade twos die very often, so it's a nice, um, 11k attacker to have. <clears throat> the triggers, um, nothing too special. I run four gins. Uh, you can make it a brawler crit. It doesn't really matter. And I run three other crits. This is a, this is a brawler one. I've never used gin skill, but you know, one day it might do something. Honestly, again, it doesn't really matter because the only time it matters is when you're using uh, this guy's skill to attack the front row and you know, has a deck of brawlers anyway, so so I run 7 crits and then I run um, 5 brawler draw triggers again, I don't know if it matters that much if they're brawlers if you can't find them, just grab whatever Narukami draw triggers there are it's not gonna matter too much and then lastly, 4 heals uh, nothing special about that, sorry, it's a little cluttered uh, yeah, and then my starter is the, uh, the Spark Kid Dragoon. The, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. You you need grade 3s in this deck for either striding or, you know, this guy needs a specific... Or not really specific, sorry. It needs another grade 3 to activate his skill, so... It's good. I mean, if... Um, I, I don't really know other Brawler starters, but I don't think they're as good as Spark Kid anyway. And then finally, um, the strikes. <clears throat> so, for Conquest Dragon. Really, no one would argue against this. It's, it's such a good card. One thing about this effect, uh, you do get plus 10 on the entire front row, even if you fail to retire something with his skill. Um, this card is just broken. Uh, I don't know what else to say. If you kill a guy and that's automatically plus 5, most often than not it's plus 10 on your front row. Including himself, that's, you know, I didn't know that in the very beginning and I was like, wow, that's just really stupid. So yeah, no one would argue against this, I'm sure. The other 4 slots, however, is very arguable. I run 2 Zoras and 2 uh, Big Bang Knuckle Turbo. So this is a new uh, Fighters Collection support. You can do whatever you want. I've seen some people run 3 Turbo, 1 Zoras. Um, some people have the Madu or whatever it's called, the one that you can bring back a grade 3 from your grave. It, 
really it's really up to you. I like two turbos. I think two turbo in my in my opinion is a must. Uh, because most often than not, when you ride into a grade 3, uh, you either have a dead turn if your opponent's a grade 2, or if your opponent's a grade 3, they're not going to have four guys um, for you to kill. And even if they do, it's very likely that you won't be able to legion due to the amount of cards in your grave. So, first stride, I like kind of just going into this and killing three guys. So you attack a vanguard, you probably attack their starter, and one other rear guard. They usually have two rear guards, so you you usually get the full effect. Um, the soul blast in this deck, so the the soul control. So usually uh, you have three soul in this deck, or after upon riding, because of the starter, grade one, and grade two. Usually you get the the cross ride grade three, but you want to keep that in your soul. So you have three soul to work with. So one is going to be for this usually, and the other two are usually for the Rising Phoenix. Um, that's why the, the Jin, the crit trigger I mentioned earlier, where is it? This might come in handy because if you have the turbo again, usually you don't have an extra soul to work with uh, without getting rid of uh, cross ride status. This also gets plus 5 if you have a face up turbo um, in your G zone. And this does not have to, um, this is not a persona flip, it does not have to flip a turbo to use a skill. So a couple combinations is if you go into this, you can flip Zoras over, if you want to, and then next time, you can do the same thing like that. Or you can do that, flip this over, and then you have two more strides to work with, aside from Conquest Dragon that is. So you kind of want to determine early on, like, do you want to stride more, or do you want to just turbo twice? Usually you don't have to turbo twice, but it's a nice option to have. Um, yeah, and again, if you have a Madu, um, I, I guess one Zoras could be a Madu. I really like Zoras because it screws your opponent over a lot. You can, like, screw over the X a lot, you know, get rid of the dotes, or... You can get rid of perfect guards, heal trigger, crit trigger if you're scared of it. It's just very nice. Maybe not very nice, just very irritating for your opponent. And that's what you want to do. Make the play that your opponent hates the most. So, yeah. Um, yeah, aside from that, I think this deck is very, very standard. And there's really not much changes I would make to the deck, even if I had, like, all the money in the world. I think this is the build I like at, at the moment. Um... Yeah, so please leave a comment in the or below if you have any questions, suggestions, improvements, or whatever. If you just want to talk with one of us, <laughs> that's fine too. Uh, other than that, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.